Father, we worship you. We exalt your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. After me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I have come to your presence. I have come to your presence. And I'm asking you. And I'm asking you to intervene. To intervene in my life. In my life. Lord God. Lord God. Touch my life. Touch my life. Intervene. Intervene. In every area. In every area of my life. Of my life. This year. This year. The year 2022. The year 2022. Intervene. Intervene. In my finances. In my finances. In my health. In my health. In my ministry. In my ministry. In my marriage. In my marriage. Every area. Every area. As I lift up my voice. As I lift up my voice. I cry unto you. I cry unto you. And I cry unto you. And I cry unto you. Intervene, Lord. Intervene, Lord. In my life. In my life. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I lift up your voice. But I intervene in my life this year, Holy Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. But I intervene in my finance, O Lord. Intervene in my marriage. Intervene in my ministry this year. This 2022, O Lord. Intervene, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Everything that concerns my life, O Lord. But I intervene. Intervene in the name of Jesus Christ. But I intervene. Intervene in my marriage, O Lord. Intervene in my finance, O Lord. Intervene in the life of my children intervene, oh Lord. Everything that concerns me, oh Lord, but I intervene this year in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. But I intervene, intervene, intervene in my head, oh Lord. Intervene, oh God. But I will need the intervention, oh Lord. But I intervene, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. But I will now have finances, oh Lord. Intervene, oh Lord. In our marriage, oh Lord. Intervene in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. In my family life, intervene in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Lord, intervene. Intervene, intervene, but I make it better, oh Lord. In my home, oh Lord, make it better in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Father, oh God, oh Lord, intervene, oh Lord, in my head, oh Lord. Intervene in my home, oh Lord. Intervene in my ministry, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father Jesus Christ, oh Lord, intervene, oh Lord. Father, intervene, intervene. Intervene in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May God intervene for us this year. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Every one of you is welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It is my prayer that by the time you leave here this afternoon, something different may have happened to you. Amen. 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 Uh, throughout the past two weeks we've been fasting and I believe you have been fasting as well. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. It is good to fast. Tell your neighbor it's good to fast. <laughs> Amen. I can point at those who have not been fasting. <laughs> Praise God. Well, it's good to fast. Amen. Uh, this afternoon we have our friend. Hallelujah. Praise God, Prophet. He has to be Mensa from CCBC. And he is here to bless us. Let's appreciate. And let's welcome him with a big hand. Let's welcome him. Give him a big hand. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. Please let's lift up our hands in worship this afternoon. Lift up your hands and just worship the Lord this afternoon. Give him glory. Thank him. Thank the Lord. Mercy gada broka de ke de ke Brada gada brada gada brada gada brada gada brada gada brada gada Bless his name somebody bless the name of the Lord Father we bless your holy name Brada gada 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 Your word is to be magnified 
there is no like you, there is no other like you. Father, we worship you, Lord. Exalt your holy name. Master, the revelation, God, I must say. Father, we say, may your name be praised, O Lord. May your name be glorified. May your name be magnified. You are worthy, you are worthy for our praise, O Lord. You are worthy to be magnified, O Lord. You are worthy to be glorified, O Lord. Father, there is no like you, O Lord. We give you all the praise, O Lord. We give you all the adoration, O Lord. We magnify your holy name, O Lord. We reverence your holy name. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy. Masanta rava shere be shanda rava shanda. Masere be shanda rava shere be shanda rava. Masondo rava shanda rava shere be shanda. Mare kere be shanda rava 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 shere be shanda. Masere be shanda rava shere be shanda. Masondo rava shanda rava shere be shanda. Eri mwa masondo rava shanda. Masere kere be shanda rava shere be shanda. Masoto rava shanda rava shere be shanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy. Yes, you are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Elohim. You are worthy, Emmanuel. You are worthy of our praise, Jesus. We give it all to you, 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 Jesus. We give it For your glory in the oh, name yes, of Jesus. Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that somebody will have an encounter oh, with you this yes, afternoon, Lord. so that the world will see our lives yes, and Jesus. glorify you, O oh Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for answer thank praise. You, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. If you believe that, put your hands together amen. to the glory of the Lord and take your seats in heavenly places. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn to someone and tell them that it's good you came. Amen. And then ask them that where were you Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But we thank God that you are here today. Praise the Lord. Um, and once again, I want to thank God for. The life of um, the papa of the house, amen. By this time, somebody should have been clapping, amen. I'm talking about your pastor, <laughs> praise God, amen. Reverend Doctor Richard Champon and Mummy, I'm happy to appreciate them, amen. And also, let's put our hands together for Pastor, amen. And then put your hands together for the leadership of the ministry. Amen. And then also clap for yourself. Amen. But we thank God for Pastor's life um, and for um, allowing himself to be used by God. Amen. Um, I, I'm quite impressed with what I've seen here today in the first service, second service, because we live in challenging times. Amen. Where ministries are struggling. I know a lot of friends um, who had about 200 members before this pandemic, and now they've only got 10, 15. Yeah. And man, I know some of that don't have ministries any longer. Praise the Lord. And man, I went to preach for one, um, and I was shocked. We were not even, we were about five of us there. This used to be a big ministry. And man, it just shows you the grace upon his life. Amen. Oh, if the person sitting next to you is not clapping, then they are suspect. 
It means they are jealous. They are jealous. Amen. It shows you the grace upon his life and the grace upon this ministry. And therefore, you must cherish it. It's a sign that you have a good leader. You know, it's a sign that um, he has um, led you. He's a, no, he's a pastor that leads you through challenges. Amen. Carries the people through challenges. Amen. Amen. And brings them out on the other side victorious. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a sign of a good pastor. He has carried the people throughout the pandemic. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and may the Lord use him to be a blessing to you even more in the name of Jesus Christ. It's always a sign of a good pastor. Amen. Um, it's a pastor who doesn't give up when there are challenges. A pastor who doesn't blame the members for it. Praise the Lord. A pastor who stands in the gap for the people. And that's always a sign of a good pastor. I mean, even I was telling him that sometimes I'm, sometimes when we are, you are with some men and women of God, and the way they see ministry is different from how we see ministry. Hey, they don't see souls. They see numbers. Amen. But you have a pastor who's interested in souls. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's true. Yeah, it's not everywhere that you must go to worship. Praise the Lord. He's, he's interested in your affairs. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's a sign of a good pastor. Praise the Lord. So many places you go, they don't care about you. No. So don't go there again. Stay here. It's a good church. I mean, let's put our hands together for a pastor once again. It's a very good sign. Very, very, very good sign. A sign of a good pastor. Pastor who loves the people. Amen. Pastor who carries the members through storms. Amen. Oh, it's only mommy who's happy. The rest of you are not. Always a sign of a good pastor. I mean, stay here. Stay here. Don't leave your church for anything. Is somebody with me? Yeah, don't leave your church. Don't leave. Don't, don't go places. It's not good. Stay here. It's a good church. Amen. And as you stay here, God will bless you. Amen. So the ones who are not clapping, you want to roam about. That's why you're not clapping. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning we have an anointing service. I hope you brought your oil. Amen. Those of you who didn't bring your oil, we'll, we'll find a way of getting some for you. Amen. But we started with 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6 to 8. And I want us to quickly read that uh, and then we'll see what the Lord um, will do for us um, this afternoon. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verses 6 to 8. Verses 6 to 8. Yes, thank you very much. He says, now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring the effort here to me. And Abiathar brought the effort to David. Praise God. Um, I, I will stop there for the sake of time. Amen. And Abiathar brought the effort to David. Very powerful story about how David and his man had gone away. By the time they came back, all their possessions had been taken. Amen. The Amalekites had taken everything and burnt the place down. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and even the men that were with David were thinking of stoning him. Praise God. Praise God. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. And I made it to understand that it means that David came to himself. And David realized that he had been through these situations before. Praise the Lord. Amen. In life, it's good to pay attention to patterns in life. Praise the Lord. I will say it again. Pay attention to patterns in life. Amen. Please don't be offended if I say certain things. But for example, if you've married the second time, you've married the first time, second time, and you're on the third time, don't blame your husband or wife for what is happening to you. It, is, it started somewhere. There's something that is following. Pay attention. Don't deal with it at the carnal level. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah. So pay attention to patterns in life. Pay attention. Praise the Lord. You've been to a church, first church problem you left, went to second church problem you left, you and your third church, amen, and you are, there's a problem there again. It's a sign that, it's a sign that it's more of a spiritual problem. Stop blaming the people. Stop it. It had nothing to do with David's men, so David didn't confront them. The problem was beyond that. Amen. And I made you to understand the same thing with work. First worked number one, number two, second job, third job, the third job. Same problems. It's a pattern. Pay attention. Pay attention. Your mother rebelled against, um, uh, your grandmother rebelled against her mother. Your mother to rebel against uh, her mother. And, and you too, you rebelled against your mother. Your children are also rebelling against you. Stop fighting them. It's a spiritual problem. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Praise the Lord. If you don't stop what happened to you or your grandmother, will happen to your children also. It's a spiritual. So David realized that no, this thing, I've got to strengthen myself and go before the Lord. And go before the Lord. Pay attention to life. Pay especially patterns. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, pay attention. I mean, there's a, a, somebody I met, a pastor, and um, uh, four pastors, and all of them had lost their ministry. Four brothers, four churches, different churches, and all of them had lost their ministries. And he start, gone, started another ministry and was, was having problems. And he was blaming the leaders. I said, it's not the leaders. No, it's not the leaders. This thing is following you. It's following you. There's something following you. There's something fighting you. Praise the Lord. It's not a physical battle. Don't fight the people. If not, what happened to your brothers will happen, or what happened to you in your previous church will happen again. So David had gone through several battles in his life. And so he realized that if he fights this one physically, he will lose again. Sorry, he will lose. He had never lost the battle. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. So though he was powerful enough, he did not pursue the people. Praise the Lord. And I said, as a result of this, many have lost cheap battles. Easy battles that you should have won. You lost them. Because you didn't pay attention. When you're in primary school, problems at school with your lecture, uh, teachers. Secondary school, same thing with your teachers. You are in university. You're having problems with the lecturers. It's not the lecturers. It's not your schoolmates. No. Something is following you. Stop fighting it physically. Don't confront it physically. You will lose if you do that. David had whatever it takes to fight. He had 600 strong men. And men could have gone out and started looking for the Amalekites, but he decided that he will not do that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He did not confront the people also. And I was saying that in my ministry, there are some things that I don't fight. No. No, I don't fight. Amen. So he called for the effort and i made you to understand that when the effort when we looked at exodus we discovered that the effort was a precious garment that was worn by the priest to minister at the altar the most holy place in other words david realized that to overcome this battle to recover everything he had lost that it would take the altar of god it would take the power of god that is why I ask you to bring the anointing today. Because at the altar, you are empowered. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear somebody. Amen. At the altar, you are empowered. Amen. Pay attention to the altar. Amen. Pay attention to the altar. If possible, um, have a place in your house where you pray. Have a place, even if you only live in one room, have a corner where you pray. And that place is dedicated to prayer. Is somebody here with me? Yeah, do that. Develop the habit. Try it and see. Try it and see. It's not every battle that you fight physically. Praise the Lord. In this case, he needed the hand of God in this battle. 
And to, to this afternoon, as you anoint yourself today, whatever battle you may be, may be experiencing, may the hand of God intervene in the name of Jesus Christ. May the power of God intervene in the name of, as you anoint yourself this morning. Hey, you will never lose a cheap battle again in the name of Jesus. As you anoint yourself this afternoon, you will never lose a battle again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the reason why David never lost a battle. David knew how to go to God. Amen. David valued the altar. Now, the, the effort was, was, was part of the pattern that God gave Moses and the temple. It was part of the pattern. And I said that the pattern that was given to the church in the Old Testament was the temple, with the, or the tabernacle that God gave Moses. In the New Testament is the communion. That's the pattern that Jesus Christ gave us. Very powerful. Make use of it. Make use of it. Never take it lightly at all. And I know this church, you have communion from time to time. I know you do. Yeah, I know. I, I don't have to be here. I know it's a good church. I know. I mean, don't, don't, don't undervalue it. Do it at home. Don't wait until you come to church. It won't cost you anything. No, do it every day. I do it every day. Sometimes even two, three times a day, I do it. That's the pattern that was given to us. That is what empowers our altar. Praise the Lord. That's our sacrifice on the altar. Don't joke with it. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we are afraid when they hear that somebody went, took somebody, killed somebody to build an altar against you. No, 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 no. We have the blood of Christ. No, no. We have the blood of God. No sacrifice is more powerful than our sacrifice. No, there isn't one. No. Don't be afraid of those ones. Amen. Don't be afraid of those ones. You have a more powerful altar. That's why I like the book of Hebrews. Amen. Hebrews tells us about the superiority of Christ over the old system. So we are superior. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why Christ had to come and die, to empower you. And that power is received at the altar. Praise the Lord. God had to do something that the devil could not phantom. Praise the Lord. And so he had to come in human form and die for us and shed his blood, Hebrews chapter 9, in the most holy place. So anytime you take the communion, you are invoking the power of the altar. The altar in the highest heaven. Praise the Lord. You are invoking that power. Praise the Lord. Make use of it. Make use of it. Praise the Lord. And you see how you begin to win powerful battles in the name of Jesus Christ. You see how the enemy will throw anything at you and will never conquer you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are heard, you are amen, you are the one I'm talking to. You will see how you begin to live from victory to victory in the mighty name of Jesus. This is why David never lost a battle. I've said it again, some of us don't get it. This is why David never lost a battle. You've got to know the battles that you fight physically and the ones you don't fight. It's not every battle that you fight physically. Pay attention to patterns. Pay attention to patterns in life. Pay attention. Don't ignore them. Praise the Lord. Amen. For example, in my family, we are so many. My father had a lot of children. <laughs> I, I, up to now, I don't know some of them. I don't know some of my siblings. Some of them, I met them in London. I was walking through Peckham. And, and there was a lady working in a shop on the till, and, and, and she was on the till. Then I didn't grow up in Ghana, so um, I don't know a lot of them. But my younger brothers really look like me. So when she saw me, she realized that I was her brother. And she was knocking on the window. She was behind the till knocking on it, and I, and I was married. I'm a pastor. I'm like, like hey, I, please, I don't want trouble. I'm married. I walked away from her. <laughs> Only for my sister in Milton Keynes to come in the evening to tell me that she was one of my sisters. Amen. So we are many. 
Now, when you come from a family like that, I'm trying to use this to tell you something. When you come from a family, that's why I was telling you the other day that in my family is the altar that runs my marriage. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, it's the altar that runs my marriage. In my family, you joke a little bit, your marriage will break. Oh, yeah. You mess a little bit. If you confront your wife about everything, the enemy will come in. If you confront your husband about everything, any little thing, the enemy will come in. He will take advantage of it. Is somebody here with me? Yeah. So I don't sleep. I pray. I don't sleep. I see something that I don't like. I go to the altar. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So in my family, marriage, hey. In fact, there are some names that when I won't mention them. When you bear those names in my family, amen, you will never marry or at least you'll marry two or three times. There are certain names in my family. They give those names to you. Oh, yeah. Or, or you will never marry. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. You will never marry. When they give you those names. So in, in, as a, you must pay attention to certain things. Pay attention. So that's my case. So I'm very careful. I don't fight my wife. In fact, we've been married since we married. I've never fought my wife before. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I, I don't insult my wife. No, 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 no. I've never fought my wife. I've never fought. I've never screamed at my wife before. Because if you do, I mean, when my father died, when my father died, we counted, we counted, we counted 38 children, excluding the ones that had passed away. Only the ones that were, uh, that were alive, we counted, we didn't add the ones that had passed away. We didn't include them. We counted 38. But on the day of his burial, we saw some coming from the village. <laughs> And then when you look at their forehead, it looks like yours. So you know it's your brother. So when you come from a family like that, you pay attention. It's the altar. You go to the altar for power. You joke a little bit, Satan comes in. And so David knew that this battle, you don't fight it physically. You need power. Somebody say, Power! And that's what we are going to pray for today. Amen. I hope you brought your oil. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. We are going to pray very soon. We are going to pray. We are going to rise up and pray. Very soon you are going to rise up and pray. Acts 10 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. Amen. David needed power. And I was saying in the morning service that the difference between David and his brothers um, when, they, when Goliath came against the people of God was the oil. Anointing. That was the difference. The, his brothers had been well trained. They had been in the army. Well trained. And yet they couldn't fight Goliath. Praise the Lord. And the difference was the anointing, the power that was upon his life, the oil that was upon his head. And then this afternoon, as the oil of God come upon your head, every Goliath will disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh! And the reason why David was able to pursue the Amalekites and recover everything and then he had lost and even gained more was because of the power he came into contact with at the altar. Praise the Lord. And this afternoon, whatever you have lost in life, uh, amen, you will recover all. And not only will you recover, but you will gain more in the name of... So not only did he recover, he also planted their land. He took everything that belonged to them. And it was so much that he started giving some to the elders of Israel. Amen. I see overflowing blessings coming your way as the anointing of God comes upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will be so much that no bank can contain your money. In the name of Jesus Christ. If I heard your amen, then you are the one I'm talking to. 
And this scripture makes us to understand that um, even Jesus Christ, can you believe it? He needed anointing. And if Jesus needed to be anointed, then how much more you? If Jesus needed power, then how much more you? And that's what the anointing is. Praise the Lord. The anointing is the power of God available to every believer, including you. It's not reserved for some. It's unfortunate that we, you see, the reason why people are abusing the church and are abusing church members is because we have left it for the few and the rest of us are happy to be spectators. That's why they are abusing you. Yeah. Well, I see, it's only one person who likes what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. We, we just sit back and we have left it for a few people and they are abusing us. If you don't give them a red carpet, they will not walk in. We have made it so. We have made it so. You go places and they, they, they are selling um, uh, porridge and there's a stampede. People are dying because of porridge. Some of them are selling their pictures. I went to pray for a lady. When I went to her house, then there was this um, um, water she was drinking. Mommy, you are, you are, you are a medical uh, person. And then when I looked at the water, the water had become very stained. So I said, what's wrong with that? Do you know what she has done? She had paid so much money for the pastor's picture. And she was told to put the picture in the water. And drinking it for deliverance. Meanwhile, she was killing herself softly. You see, and it's not, it's our fault, all of us. Jesus said, if you believe in me, he said, he said, if you believe in me, that was the qualification. He didn't say if you're an apostle. He didn't say if you're a prophet. He didn't say if you're a pastor. He didn't say if you're a teacher. He simply said that if you believe in me, if you believe in me, if you believe in me, greater works than this will you do. That's what he said. Yeah, so if you believe in me, if you believe in him, every work that he did, you are supposed to do the same and even greater works than that. If you believe in Jesus, how many of you believe in Jesus? Lift up your hand and let me see. Then you are a candidate. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 16, um, verse 17. Put down the screen for me, please. Mark 16, 17. Amen. He says, if you believe in me, that's the qualification. He didn't mention evangelist. He didn't mention apostle. Amen. He didn't mention anything. He said, if you believe in me. And he, again, he repeats, uh, it's repeated here. And he says, and these signs will follow who? These signs will follow who? Those who, Those who believe. And what are we meant to do? This is what you are meant to do. You, 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 in the name of Jesus, you, 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 you. And me. What are we meant to do? We are meant to do what? I'll put it on the screen again, please. We are meant to cast out demons, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, and even if when we drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt us. When we lay hands on the sick, what will they do? They will recover. It's not reserved for some. No, it's reserved for all of us here. So why are we not flowing in this anointing? Why? Why? And this afternoon, I want to share some points with you. Amen. 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 But the anointing is powerful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The anointing is powerful. It can pick you from, from zero to riches. Amen. Yeah. Very powerful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus Christ. The anointing is awesome. And my prayer is that the Lord will anoint you this, this, this afternoon for great works in the name of Jesus Christ. So why, so how do we, um, how do we acquire this anointing? Amen. Now, when we hear about anointing, the first thing that comes to our mind is prayer and fasting. That is good. Prayer and fasting is good. But if you don't do what I'm about to, dis, to tell you this afternoon, it, you, you gain the anointing by to destroy you. I'll say it again. Prayer and fasting is good. And I see when you go to Ghana, 
you see people on the mountain praying, praying, giddy, 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 for anointing. You watch them 10 years later, and they're no more. 15 years later, and they've made a wreck of the ministry. Or they are doing foolish things with the anointing. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and I'm going to give you some points here, a few points, and we'll begin to pray. If you really want to be anointed, um, 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 follow this um, uh, um, point, and it will bless you. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. I mean, this, you, do, you don't normally hear these ones. Amen. You don't, you don't normally hear this one, but it will help you. Acts 1, verse 4. And then we'll rise up very soon and begin to pray. We'll rise up very soon and we'll begin to pray. Um, where are we? Where are we? I know it's on them, but I was looking for my, my own um, my own points. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. It says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall do what? You shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And Jesus Christ was about to depart permanently. And he was telling them how to um, acquire the anointing. Praise the Lord. I mean, part of it was waiting, which is good. Amen. But, but there were some instructions before that. Amen. And very often we don't pay attention to that. I mean, but this is what truly brings the anointing. The first thing we see here, and it's there in the scripture there. It says, and being assembled together with them. Later on, you see that they were together praying in one accord later on. Praise the Lord. Now, one of the ways to acquire the anointing is your ability to work with other believers. I'll say it again. If you truly want to be anointed, learn to work with people in the body of Christ. Don't be a loner. Don't be a loner. No matter how anointed you are, humble yourself and learn to work with others. He said they were gathered in one accord. When you read down further down, in one accord, when the power came upon them, they were there in one accord, in one accord. Now listen to this. The apostle Paul had an encounter with Saul at the time he was Saul. Had an encounter with Jesus on his way to Damascus to persecute the church. He had an encounter with Jesus. Now listen to this. If a believer, a Christian sees Christ even in their dream. Hey! If they see Jesus in their dream, they will not even listen to pastor again. Now I'm saying something here. Amen. Not to talk about seeing him to the extent that you are blinded. Praise the Lord. Do you know that after that encounter, it took him another, some say 12 years, some say 14 years, before he began his missionary journey. Acts chapter 13, please. Acts 13. I'm talking about working together. Acts 13 verse 1. I think it is. Yeah, now look, look, look at this again. No, Acts 13. Acts 13. It's not good to answer your, your phone in the church, you know. It's not good. See, see the devil doesn't want it to come on the screen. It's a liar. Acts 13. Okay. If, <laughs> okay, I'll read it anyway if it's not coming. Amen. But it says, now, now follow this carefully. Now, remember, remember, this is Saul who saw Jesus physically. That he was blinded. Praise the Lord. Now, if it was some of us, man, the next Sunday we will not come to church. Pastor will call you and say, No, I saw Jesus. <laughs> I'm not coming again. Now, very powerful. But you see, for about 12 years he waited. He waited on. Okay, stand there. It says, now in the church that was an Antioch, there were certain prophets, there were teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called uh, Niger or Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, um, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrad and Saul. 
as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the works which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them, then sent them away. He waited, he waited until the elders of the church gathered and laid hands on him and sent him away. If it were us, you would have just gone alone. Many have gone alone and destroyed their ministries. Many have gone alone and destroyed their lives. Pastor lay hands on me. I've seen Jesus. Pastor lay hands on me. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. They will not allow it. And the elders of the church lay hands on me. No, no, no. I saw Jesus. You didn't see Jesus. But he waited. That's, how he, that's why he did, he did so, so many powerful things. So powerful that aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from him and they were going around and they were healing the sick. I mean, casting out demons. Because he waited, he worked with the church. They worked together. They laid hands on him. They prayed for him and then sent him out. As you wait on the Lord and you humble yourself under this ministry and the pastor lays hands on you, may you be empowered to do greater things than Paul did. He waited. And that's what is lacking in the body of Christ. Everybody wants to go and do their own thing. That's why the church is weak. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you want genuine anointing, I'm talking about genuine anointing. Learn to work with people in the body of Christ. Now I was saying earlier on that when you go to the GP surgery, who, what kind of people do you see there? See people, you hear some coughing, some sneezing, some even... I'm groaning a little bit because they're in pain. Mm, mm, are you with me? That's because, and you're not surprised by it, are you? No, because that's where, that's where you, you expect to meet people like that. The same thing when you come to church, you must expect to meet people who have behavioral problems. Oh, you see, only, I only have one person who likes my message. It's, it's like this side. I, I, okay, let me stand here and preach to those on this side. It looks like those of you here don't like me. Learn to work with them. Yeah. Stop complaining about people. That's why we are here. We are all sinners. He says the blood of the new covenant which was shed for the remissions of our what? Our sins. Yeah. That's why we are here. We are here because we are sinners. We are here because we have problems. So stop talking about that sister and that brother. That's why he's here. And very often those who do that have a plank in their eye. And they are trying to remove a speck from somebody's eye. Oh, you watch it carefully. Watch it. Watch it. They are the ones who are like that. They have their own big problems, but they're talking about somebody else's. Praise the Lord. So that's why we are here. And the devil knows that. So he will allow you to be offended about somebody and leave. So that you will not be empowered. I like that. No way. Who said no way? Thank you, mommy. God bless you for that. Amen. And that's why the church was so powerful in the book of Acts. They were so powerful because they worked together. As, as powerful as Saul was, anytime there was an issue, he would go to the Jerusalem council. Now he was not going around, starting ministries, all working so hard, and yet he would still refer himself to the, um, the council of Jerusalem. Can you, believe, can you see the humility? Yeah. That's why they were so powerful in the book of Acts. That's why we are not seeing many of the miracles we see there nowadays. That's what is lacking. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give you the ability to work with people in the church. May the Lord give you the ability to humble yourself under the leadership of the ministry so that the Lord will empower you to do mighty things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Acts chapter 1 again verse 4. I think I'm just going to show you one more. One more and then, and then we'll begin to pray. Praise the Lord. Acts 1 for again. 1 for please, if you don't mind. Acts 1 for again, sorry. Acts 1 for, and I'm going to show you one more. And then we will begin to pray. And we'll begin to pray. So please don't forget what I've said. If you really want power, learn to submit under leadership. Work with people in the church. Work with the leaders of the church. Praise the Lord. We don't have perfect people here. Jesus Christ himself said that no man is good. Jesus said, no man is perfect. No man is good. He said, no man is good. No man is good. Amen. Yeah, so I'm not good. You are not good. We are not good. Nobody's good. Who is good here? Exactly. 
So stop worrying about that sister. Stop worrying about that brother. Amen. We have all come to see the GP. It's Jesus. That's why we are here. Amen. If you don't want to hear anybody cough, don't go to the GP surgery. That's why we are all here. We are, I have my issues. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then he said, now this is the next bit I was saying that the next bit, we don't like it in the Western world. Amen. Now, you see, it's not just prayer and fasting. But this is what they did. They said, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. He commanded them. Somebody say command. 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 Now, if they had not followed the command, would they have been anointed? Yeah. Exactly. If you don't like commandments, you can never be anointed. If you don't like to follow instructions, you can never be anointed. And some people don't like instructions, especially in the what's the word? It's my right, it's my right, it's my right. In the kingdom of God, it's not so. In the kingdom of God, it's not democracy, it's autocracy. We follow what God has said. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not. And I was saying that these were people, they had families, they had children. Are you with me? That they were supposed to take care of. And they didn't know how long they were going to wait for the anointed to come upon them. And yet they obeyed. Hey. They went the waiting, not knowing when they're going to come back, when they're going to get the next meal for their family. They just obeyed and went. Some of you, Pastor, have said that today we are staying to four o'clock. Oh. I need to go home and cook for the week. No, that's what we do. And we walk out. Oh, you pick a bag and walk out. Even the pastor has said it. God will never anoint you. No. God will never anoint you. Or oh, come early. Yeah. Amen. God uses those who follow instructions. Those who surrender their will to him. If you don't learn to surrender your will to God, forget anointing. I'm talking about now there are a lot of fake anointing out there. But if you want genuine anointing, you must surrender your way to God. That's why Romans chapter 12 verse 1. The Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Romans chapter 12. We are going to pray in a minute. See, one power. I'm teaching you how to gain power. This is the best way to get power. Prayer is good. Fasting is good. But this will do you more good. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living what? Sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable servant. Sacrifice. Obedience goes with sacrificing. Is somebody here with me? Sacrificing. Forgoing the things that you need to do for God. That's why they were so powerful. Praise the Lord. They followed instructions. Abraham was blessed. He later became Abraham because he followed exactly what God told him. He said, go, Abraham, go, leave your kindred. Now, um, architectural and discovery makers to understand that where Abraham came from was very wealthy because they discovered a central heating system way back then. They had central heating in his home. So it appeared that he came from a very wealthy family. And yet God says, from now on, you are no man. Keep going. And because he was obedient today, Israel is the most powerful nation on this earth. Amen. Somebody didn't hear me. Amen. Because he was obedient today, Israel is the most powerful nation on this earth. Amen. You touch Israel, you touch the whole world. Yeah. Everybody is afraid of Israel. Because he obeyed. Because he obeyed. Amen. Amen. May the Lord give you a humble spirit to obey instructions, to follow commandments. As I said, in the Western world, we don't like it. Amen. But it will not help you. In the kingdom of God, it's not so. You must learn to follow instructions. And because they obeyed, on the day of Pentecost, they had a mighty encounter with the Lord. Amen. As you change your attitudes towards the things of God, may you have a mighty encounter with the Lord. As we anoint yourself this afternoon, may you do greater works than Jesus Christ did. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Do you want me to add two more to it and we'll go?
Amen. Then let's turn our Bibles very quickly. I just mentioned these ones. I will not go into them. Um, Mark, Mark chapter 16 again. Mark 16. Let's go to Mark 16. Um, verse number 17 downwards. 18, 19. I think it's verse 19. Mark 16. If you want genuine anointing. If you want genuine anointing. Yes. Yes, verse 19. He says, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And please, the next one. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Go, go to 18, my apology, my apology. Uh, what am I? Oh, verse 20, no, say verse 20, the next one, that's right. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you want to be anointed, go out. Somebody say, go out. Amen. Don't restrict your ministry to the four corners of this building. Are you with me? Go out. Going out doesn't necessarily mean that um, you must go and preach as someone with introduction and the body and conclusion. No. No, that's not what it means. Amen. Going out means that let your life be an example to Christ wherever you are. Amen. Yeah. Going out means that just share your story with somebody about Christ, what God has done for you. That's all it means to go out. Somebody say, go out. Go out. And because they went out, then signs followed them. If you want anointing, go out. Go out. Somebody say, go out. Go out. It means that wherever you are, you must live your life as a Christian. Amen. You should, if, if you've been to work and people have never come to you and asked you that, See, there's something different about you. Yeah. What is it? If nobody has ever asked you, then you have not gone out. Somebody should be able to come to you and say, oh, you're not like us. Um, even when we are talking about the manager, you didn't get involved. Did I say talking about the manager? Yeah, there's something unique about you. Uh, you do what you are told at the workplace. There's something unique about you. You never come to work late. Did I say come to work late? Yeah. Is it? These things you do because of Christ. Yes. Yeah. You do it because of Christ. Yeah. Your life must be a testimony wherever you go. Yeah, you do it because of Christ. You don't attack anybody at the workplace. Because of Christ, they're watching you. You're a Christian. You don't have to carry a big Bible to work before they know you're a Christian. That's called hypocrisy. Because in the, those days, they didn't, they didn't have the Bible. You know that. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the Bible as we have it today. So go out. Say go out. Yeah. Go out. Say be an example. And you'll be anointed in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together to the glory of the Lord. And let's rise up, please. And then rise up, please. Rise up, please. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Lift up your hand right now. Let's, and begin to thank God for the message. Please, it's important that you don't forget the message. It's important that you don't forget. Meditate on the message as you are praying. Meditate on every word that has come. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God that has come this afternoon. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. If you really want to be anointed, it was not reserved for some. It was never reserved for some people. It was, the anointing was reserved for all of us. Somebody begin to pray. Somebody begin to pray. Hey! Somebody begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to, begin to pray. If you want to be anointed, learn to work together. Amen. Work in one accord. Amen. If you want to be anointed, learn to follow simple instructions. Instructions in the house of God. Learn to follow instructions wherever you find yourself. Follow instructions. If you want to be anointed, be obedient. If you really want to be anointed, you must totally surrender your will to God. If you want genuine anointing, you must live sacrificially. Romans 12, 1. You must live sacrificially if you want to be anointed. If you want to be anointed, you must go out, go out, go out, go out, go out. Let your life be a testimony wherever you find yourself. Let your life be a testimony wherever you find yourself. Hey! Somebody pray. Hey! Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Hey. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Now, if you came with your anointing, lift it up now. If you don't have one, I'm sure somebody will go around like we did in the morning service with cups and anointing. Amen. Please get it out. I want to share some testimonies with you of how this thing is so powerful. Praise the Lord. The oil is so powerful. It does wonders. It does wonders. It does wonders. Lift it up. I'm going to pray for it. If you don't have one, don't worry. Um, I think they're trying to make provision for you. They're trying to make provision for you if you don't have one. Don't worry. Hey! Dege, dege. And while they're waiting, I just want to share some testimonies with you of how this oil has transformed the life of many. Amen. After we pray, it's going to be different. It, it will not be the same oil that you have in the bottle. In, in, in the bottle. Praise the Lord. Um, during the morning service, I was shared. I, I got somebody to actually read it from my phone. Um, somebody who had cyst in the body uh, and recently um, and they were going to operate on the person they went for their last appointment before the operation and when they did another scan oh can I have everybody's attention please just listen to me don't worry about what is going on here don't worry about what is going on here it's important that you listen to what I'm saying amen don't worry about what is going on here amen they're trying to make arrangements for those who don't have um, but you don't pay attention amen and, 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 and the person called me we anointed the baby it was a baby Amen. By the time they, 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 they checked the records again, the cyst had disappeared. Amen. Praise the Lord. The cyst had disappeared. I, I've been to places where we have anointed the house and people have run out of the house because they have a bad spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, the other day, I think the other, during the week, I shared another testimony with, you, a testimony with you about a lady who had a man chanting next door in the night. He wakes up in the night to chant. She anointed the front of her house. And then within a few months, the man left. There was another lady too who lives at Stratford. Same thing. And there's somebody who challenged her physically. And, and, and she called me. I said, use the anointing that I, I prayed over. And she did the same thing. Within days, this one was within days, the person left. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's the power that we have. It's just that sometimes we don't value it. Or, or sometimes until we do something strange, you don't want to believe it. Amen. For example, if I said... Uh, open it and I'll use my shoe to hit the top of it. <laughs> no, you'll be surprised, Daddy. You'll be surprised. Oh, you'll be surprised. And I take off my shoe and I start knocking the top of it. Then you believe it. You know, we want it to be strange before we believe it. it doesn't have to be strange. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. There was a pastor who was ministering, and when you come, he spits in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. What kind of administration is that? And then we believe those things. Amen. This is something strange is about to happen to this oil. I said something strange is about to happen to this oil. Lift it up and begin to pray over it. Lift it up as they are making provision for others. Begin to pray over it. Begin to pray over it. Begin to pray over it. Magragada gada 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 gada. Hey. Mezze de grege de gede gede. Ragada grege de gede gede. Mezu gada gada gada. In Jesus name. Now I don't mind. You can play by if you can come down a little bit. If you can just come down a little bit. Amen. Keep praying. Kids keep praying. In Jesus name. Amen. Now open it now. Open it now. I'm going to pray over it. I've seen mighty things happen through this oil. In the morning, I was sharing a testimony about my niece who said she didn't... Um, the one I spoke about in the morning. Um, in fact, she had made up her mind that um, she was in America. And I suggested that, listen, I told her, I didn't suggest it. The Lord told me to tell her that her destiny is connected to Ghana. Say, me Ghana, no, I will never go to Ghana. And I said, your destiny is connected. So she, I prayed over the anointing oil for her. And she went to Ghana one day. Today, as I speak to you, She's one of the top people in the, the, the current government. Um, yeah. yeah. Doing so well. And so I asked her deliberately that, when are you going back to America? She says, no, no, I'm not going back. I mean, it transforms life. Yeah. Now, take it seriously. It, I've seen children who have changed because of the anointing. Last Thursday, we had a, this Thursday, we had a miracle service. 
Somebody came to give a testimony of how her husband has changed when she started using the anointing oil. Amen. So I'm lift it up as I pray for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I sanctify this oil. Can I have the big one? Where's the big one? Can I have the big one, please? The big bottle. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I sanctify this oil. I declare that it's no longer an ordinary oil. I declare that this oil has now lost all its natural tendencies in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from this moment onwards, this oil represents the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever this oil touches signs, wonders, and miracles will manifest. Wherever this oil touches, uh, I declare that you will attract the favor of God. Wherever this oil touches, may the Lord dispatch his angels uh, to your rescue in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh. Wherever this oil touches, may doors that may have been shut in the past begin to open for you. You will walk through doors easy. We will walk through doors with ease. You will walk through doors with ease. Doors will even open for you before you get there. In the name, they will open on their own accord before you get there. In the name of doors of promotion will open for you. Doors of breakthrough will open for you. Financial doors will open for you. Marital doors will open for you. Academic doors will open for you. Uh, career doors will open for you in the name of home office doors will open for you in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Hey! Wherever this oil touches, my God, I declare upon this altar that every yoke will be, will be destroyed and every burden will be lifted. Wherever this oil touches, ancestral altars can no longer speak against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever this oil touches, wherever they take your name, the Lord will fight for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever this oil touches, I declare that witchcraft activity will cease immediately. Wherever this oil touches, demonic and evil spirits will flee in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever this oil touches, sir, you will reign, you will conquer, you will rule in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you even as I breathe over them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, just anoint your forehead a little bit. We pray for two minutes and then I'll tell you what to do with it. Anoint your forehead just a little bit. Anoint yourself. Just anoint yourself. You're going to pray for five minutes. You're going to pray for five minutes. Make sure you take it serious. Don't lose it. Keep it. Especially those of you who have yours in cups. Don't throw it away. It's powerful. Amen. And just put the oil away. Make sure it's properly sealed. Make sure so that it doesn't leak. Make sure you seal it properly. Make sure you seal it properly. Make it leak. put it down and let's pray. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing. By the anointing. I destroy. I destroy. Any attack. Any attack against my destiny. Against my destiny. By the anointing. By the anointing. I destroy. I destroy. Any attack. Any attack. Through my dreams. Through my dreams. By the anointing. By the anointing. I neutralize. I neutralize. Curses. Curses. I neutralize. I neutralize. Charms. Charms. By the anointing. By the anointing. I neutralize. I neutralize. Divination. Divination. And incantations. And incantations. Against my life. Against and my, my life. loved ones. And my loved ones. In the name of Jesus. In the name of now Jesus. put your hands together and begin to pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. You are doing very well. Continue to pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. You are doing extremely well. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. You are doing very well. Continue to pray. Somebody continue to pray. Somebody continue to pray. Somebody continue to pray. Somebody continue to pray. You are doing very well. You are doing very well. Continue to pray. Put your hands together. Pray like never before. Hey. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the mark of the oil upon my forehead. By the mark of the oil upon my I head, declare. I declare that no power. That no power can monitor my life. Can monitor my life. Can monitor my loved ones. Can monitor my loved ones. Ever again. Ever again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No demonic eye. No demonic can eye follow me around. Can follow me around. In the name of Jesus in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. When they go to the coven. When they go to the. It will backfire. It will backfire. When they go to the altar. When they go to the altar. It will backfire. It backfire. Because. Because I have been sealed. I have been sealed. By the the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy I, am Ghost. I am untouchable in the mighty name of, Jesus. name of Jesus. Now put your hands together and begin to pray. Hey. They can no longer monitor you. 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 It will backfire. They can no longer monitor you. They can no longer monitor you. They can no longer monitor you. The blood of Jesus. I am sealed. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. I am sealed. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Bracata hey. Yabade, Mado, Brehata Yabada. My children are sealed, my loved ones are sealed. In the blood of somebody Jesus. Pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. They are sealed in the blood of Jesus. Somebody pray, somebody pray. You are doing very well, you are doing very well. Continue to pray. Hey. Lebrekato renda bazeke brehata yabada lebrekata yabado brehata rabade marabade bazeke brehata yabada somebody pray lebado brehate yabada ba rekata yabade brehato rebede somebody pray somebody pray somebody pray you are doing extremely well you are doing extremely well continue to intensify your prayer they can no longer watch you they can no longer monitor you they can no longer touch you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. In fact, what, what, listen to this carefully. Listen to this carefully. In fact, when we are praying this prayer, the Lord said there's somebody here. Sometimes it's as if somebody is following you. Come and let's pray for you. It's as if somebody is following you. Come and let's pray for you. She's not the only one. It's as if somebody is following you. Come and let's pray for you. Let's cancel it now. By the power of this oil, they can no longer monitor you. I mean, there's somebody else. There's not just the two of them. Can I have the oil, please, sir? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's somebody else here. Join them. There's somebody else here. Don't be ashamed. Come. Sometimes you feel as if there's something following you. Don't be ashamed of it. Stop this thing now. The rest of us, let's put our hands together and begin to pray for them. Let's put our hands together and begin to pray for them. Begin to pray for them. Somebody pray for them. Somebody pray for them. Yebado brehanta rabade zeke brehanta rabada zeke brehanta rabada ba zeke brehanta. Somebody pray for them. Yebada. Somebody pray for them. Hey. We cancel it. We blind them in the spiritual realm. In the mind. We blind them in the spiritual realm. Yebado. We blind them in the spiritual realm. In the blood. We blind them in the spiritual realm. Sanctify. We blind them in the spiritual realm. We blind them in the spiritual realm. They can no longer monitor you. Jesus. They can no longer monitor your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. Receive divine covenant. In the name of Jesus. Receive divine covenant. No more. In the name of Jesus. Receive divine covenant. Receive divine covenant right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the 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 name of Jesus. In Upon my I life. declare. I declare that whatever I declare, that whatever I declare, whatever I say, that whatever I say will always be established. Will always be established. Whatever I say, whatever I say, will come to pass. Will come to pass in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare that I will do. That I will do greater works. Greater than works than Jesus Christ did. Than Jesus Christ did. I will cast out demons. I will cast out demons. I will take up serpents. I will take up serpents. Even when I'm giving bad food, it can it cannot hurt me again. 
even if I've given bad food, it cannot hurt me again. In the name of Jesus in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will lay Christ. hands on the sick. I will lay hands and on the sick. And they will recover. always recover. They will always they will recover. Always they recover. Always they will always recover. They will always recover. They will always recover. Emotionally. Emotionally. Physically. Physically. Spiritually. Spiritually. When I lay hands, sir, when I lay they, hands will they, will they will recover. They will recover. They will recover. I am for signs and wonders. 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 In the name wonders. of Jesus, sir. Now Jesus. put your hands together and begin to pray. Somebody pray, pray, intensify your prayer. Intensify. Whatever you say now is exactly what will happen in your life. Hey. Rato Nabada, Kibrehata Rabada, Yebado, Brehati Rabada, somebody pray, Hata Yabadaba, Ziki, somebody pray, Tarabada, Yeket, somebody pray, Yabada, Rato, Rebri, somebody pray, Rabadi, Madaba, Ziki, you are doing very well, you are doing very well, Kata Brehatu Yabada, Legede, Brehata Yabada, Lekato Brehata Yabada, Libaba, Seke Brehata Yabada, Lebrehata Rebe. Bada brihati ribeda yeka do brihata raba leba do brihata yabade mara ba seke brihata yabada yeba do brihata in Jesus name thank you amen i lift up your hand right now